Hello, my name is Candice, and today I will be talking about the execution by Yue Minjun. Yue was born in 1962 in China and is currently based in Beijing. He began painting at a young age, and despite having other jobs growing up, he eventually became a full-time artist. His current style of smiling portraits was partially inspired by another Chinese artist named Geng Jian Yi, whose art is shown on the bottom right. Yu has created many works over his lifetime, some of his most famous being the Hat Collection and the Massacre of Chios, along with the Execution. To better understand the meaning behind the Execution, we must look at the historical context surrounding it. In 1989, six years before Yu painted the Execution, violent protests broke out in Beijing, China. Many people, mainly students, were gathering to protest the communist government and advocate for a democracy. The protests persisted for about a month, but on July 8th, the government fought back. Troops were deployed and they shot indiscriminately on the protesters, killing at least 300, maybe thousands, and arresting around 10,000. This massacre put an end to the protests and the Chinese government prevailed. Another thing we have to look at is cynical realism. Cynical realism is a Chinese contemporary art movement that began in the 1990s. Artists of this movement often employ irony and satire to interpret socio-political events, and through this, they seek to criticize and break away from the collective Chinese mindset forced upon them by the Cultural Revolution. Yue is often associated with this movement against his wishes, because many of his art, including the execution, often depict things that people cannot help but see as communist China. Along with his mocking portraits, Yue's art is a perfect example of cynical realism. The execution was painted in 1995 with oils, and its measurements are 150 centimeters by 300 centimeters. It is Yue's more, most expensive piece to date, selling for nearly $6 million. Now let's dive into the analysis. Although many believe that the execution is a criticism of communist China, Yue employs us to think differently. In his eyes, the execution is much less a criticism than a cry of confusion. He is confused by the violence of the Tiananmen Square massacre, and he is left wondering if all the protesting was worth it. Because in the end, the government easily prevailed, and the protesters suffered a brutal defeat in a fight they never had a chance of winning in the first place. In a way, this struggle is so absurd that it's almost laughable. Yes, the painting can be thought of as as a cynical criticism because of the figures mocking grins and Yue's satirical portrayal of executioner and victim, but there's a deeper meaning. Let's analyze the figures first. On the left are the four victims, all near naked and very, very exposed. In true Yue style, they all have ginormous smiles on their faces that look almost painfully large. They are laughing at the absurdity of their death and that is happening by execution and because they have been so utterly humiliated by this public display. They are also helpless and know that there is no getting out of this, but their smiles show that they have some dignity left. They are laughing in the face of death, literally, because they are brave. They will stand proud by their ideals until the very end, never giving in to the other side. In a way, such blatant defiance earns them a victory. Their lack of clothing also serves to emphasize how vulnerable they are and that they have no way of protecting themselves, much less fight back. Two of the victims are also uselessly trying to cover themselves up, the other two with their hands on their hips. This highlights their struggle between fear and defiance, but ultimately they try to put on a brave face because they'd rather go down as heroes than cowards. The figures on the right have a much different story. These four are the executioners, made clear by the imaginary guns they are pointing at the victims. All four have matching smiles, but their expressions are not telling the same tale as the victims. The impish grins tell us that they are shameless and proud of this execution, and they are carefree enough that this is almost like a game to them. The executioners, unlike the victims, have nothing to fear. They are clothed and have weapons, so they are completely at ease. In addition, their imaginary guns also serve to highlight their cruel, carefree nature. Again, because the guns are imaginary, this emphasizes that the executioners find this all to be a game. They don't even have real weapons to use against the victim because they just aren't worth it. In addition, they are fully clothed, showing that they are not vulnerable and therefore have nothing to fear. In addition, all the power is in their hands, so they're in completely control of the situation. The background of the painting also serves an important purpose. Execution is taking front of a red wall. At first glance, this wall is an allusion to communism and the Tiananmen Square protests. The victims would become the protesters, the executioners become the Chinese government. 
This wall highlights the irony of the situation, that the protesters will die, the protesters will die in front of the very thing they were trying to destroy, all their efforts for nothing. However, this situation can be applied to the broader sphere of human conflict. Without associating the wall with communist China, this painting becomes a symbol for conflict everywhere in which a people seek to fight injustice but often do not prevail. Such leads us to wonder, what's the point? Why fight? In creating this work, you have pondered the same thing. But in the end, these struggles prove that there is hope for humanity. For as long as there are people out there that will risk their life for change, even if they don't succeed, one day, someone will. Another thing to note is the fact that the painting is set during the day. This emphasizes that the executioners have no shame and want the world to see what they have done, nothing to hide. In contrast, the fact that the execution is during the day highlights the vulnerability of the victims. For not only are they almost naked and weaponless, but they don't even have the cover of darkness to shield them from disgrace. All these odds are stacked against them, but it just further proves how brave they are to stand tall until the very end, no matter how much the executioners try to humiliate them. My analysis led me to conclude that the overarching theme of this work is that sometimes laughter is the only way to overcome hardship. In conflicts such as the one in the execution, one side is generally less powerful and much more likely to lose. That side can be the side of progress and change, but it has nothing to help them to defeat injustice. So sometimes all they can do is laugh, put on a brave face, and fight until the very end. Even if they don't succeed, they've shown the world that there is hope for change, inspiring many more to take up the cause when they fall. Their ability to smile despite all the odds stacked against them proves that one day they will prevail. Thank you for listening.